Hello ladies and gentlemen, so I wanted to show you this YOLO video uh, for Starbase. Looking forward to it. YOLO is their programming language for Starbase, which is pretty cool. And uh, we just pause here and uh, so it's kind of like, I would say almost like the heart of your, uh, your system if it's either a ship or a station. Uh, basically all your data is on it this is how you program you know you know different functions of your station and ships with it if it's you know keeping uh, you know an eye on your reactor or if it's you know basically automating your turret system up above uh, just different things like that you can you do even do like a basic autopilot with it I think you can even do an advanced autopilot I think they even have things like range finders and stuff like that but you can see the wiring system here so you can assume the blue wires like the signal system probably the idea is like uh, ethernet cable sort of inspiring color here uh, so you can see it goes around and uh, it's pretty cool you can see it actually going under here so if you're wondering well like are these connected they are um, they're just there's a line that goes all neath, underneath of them and this goes to the next row and kind of goes through and pretty damn cool if you ask me I believe this might be I don't know if that's power or if that's propellant might, might be per power then because I feel like propellant probably wouldn't be going everywhere then again you do power these and I don't see any power so maybe power goes through the blue as well I don't know if that's actually been stated or not like a, a direct thing so it's just showing some examples of turning on lights elevators factory this is really cool here um, tractor beam and then so the tractor beams have like sort of a, a line that shows like shoots it I guess it's just to show you it's working don't know if that could be turned on and off but that's just sort of how they're doing it here anyways uh, but this is a like an actual factory which is really cool so this could be used to make uh, special parts right uh, for example uh, one of the things we were told is that you can have uh, the exoskeleton suit, basically your mind's uploaded into one of those. Well, basically on your ship, when you're in a battle and whatnot, if you die, basically you spawn, I guess, at a major spawn point. So if it's your major station or, you know, one of the newbie st uh, stations, etc. But you can uh, spawn elsewhere, for example, on a ship or a small station, things like that. And the way that works is basically you can make exocells and suits, sort of like um, iRobot. You know how, like, you know, those uh, transporter ship uh, transporter vehicles that were on the ground that were, you know, attacking Will Smith and they slide the doors open and all of them start running out? Well, think of that, but like unactive drones. And basically, when you die, your conscious will upload and use one of those drones from the rack and so i guess like for example say maybe your ship holds 15 of those uh drones it kind of gives your ship uh and your mates 15 respawn chances of course if it got badly damaged or a few of them got damaged you know there's there's that of course but uh this is really cool anyways to see that in action and you can see like just all the wiring and everything it's just really awesome here uh it just it really adds to the game uh, which I think is really cool. So, um, and what's another thing you could do too, right? Is yes, you can have uh, a you know a program to control the turrets and shoot for you. But one thing, and I don't know if that's what this example is. Uh, I assume so, but uh, is this shooting? Oh, this one this one has its own guns as well. It looks like. But what you could do is have like five of these on the battleship, right? And one person can control the aiming of it. Uh, so, you know, humans are a little quicker to react, I guess, in a sense. So it could offer you just a little bit more on that, uh, which I think is really cool. Not sure why I got this weird flashing going on. This is something new. I've never seen that happen. Could be my new OBS version I'm using here, but uh, you were just going to have to get used to it for this video anyways. Once in a while, it does just this like, little quick flash on the screen. Um, so basically, uh, the YOLO code is stored on these tablets, and I think there's three tiers of them, and basically they get advanced. So the more uh, advanced tablets have things like trigonometry on it. Uh, they don't go faster. They go 0 0.2. So I think it's basically each line is executed at 200 milliseconds, which is 0 0.2 seconds, I believe. Uh, so... 
you know, it takes a while to execute through this entire thing. You know, five lines is one second. You know, the the whole tablet itself, I don't think it goes further than 20. I think that's when you have to combine multiple tablets would be uh, two seconds worth of time. But you can do stamps like, for example, at four, you can say line four, you can say go to line 10. Or you probably could actually write it into line three at the end even if you have space. But I guess the idea is you can execute them. Uh, to skip lines or even get delayed, uh, things like that, like go through all the lines if you want that actual delay in there. I assume you might be able to even add delays in there. I do not know that for sure, but uh, I know you can add loops and things like that, of course, but by default it loops already, so... Um. This is talking about a power source. So the power source is blue here. So it looks like both data and power is shared through the uh, the blue line. So that's interesting. Um, kind of makes me slightly sad. I mean, it almost makes sense to have less. Oh, yeah, here they're showing the go to. So basically it'll go one, two, three, four, five, and then it'll go to one, two, three, four, five. And then gets your thing. I love the the quality. I like just being able to actually see the the LCD screens. So, and they're showing that basically you can use your handheld tool. You can bring it up anytime, kind of like a armrest PDA, right? And basically, you can click on any uh, object that might have data to it, which pretty much every object out there has it. You click a piece of hull plating, it probably won't have any data on it, right? But the idea is if you click a button or you click, uh, you know, your reactor or you click pretty much anything out there, you're going to see some, you know, you know, information on it here. You can see stored local power, local power, stored heat, max heat. Uh, really awesome to just get different information out of it. Uh, which is really cool. And it has a log here as well, which is probably useful for picking that up later on. You know, just, uh, oh, what was that last variable I was looking at? Just go through your log and you can click it. Um, so this one is a message. Oh, this is the signal. Uh, I believe this is like the signal uh, device. So you got message, signal strength, uh, listen angle, target message, target frequency, and then a frequency number. I'm not sure how high the frequency number goes, but you could pretend it goes, you know, tens of thousands, maybe even more. Uh, basically, as long as somebody else isn't using your frequency number, you can probably keep it a little more private, and you can probably even put decimals in your fr frequency. I don't know, but uh, probably would uh, make it work really well. So you can see this is one of the controls. So backwards, lever minimum out, max out, lever center out, center dead zone uh so you can make a bigger dead zone basically so you know uh lever bind move speed um so some really good information here and uh the nice thing is you can name these as well so uh, i don't know i i guess each i don't know if each device has a name as well uh, store raw fuel, no. So I'm wondering if you could just name this device and then that's how it's controlled. So if you have lever min out on 20 different devices, I don't know if you play with that value. I don't know if all of a sudden you're going to control all 20 of them or if you can kind of network it in the sense that uh, it should only touch the one because it has a property name as well. Uh, but I would assume the best way to do it is saying, you know, cockpit or something or CP. That sounds wrong when I say it that way. You know, CPF, you know, saying you can control it this. Because maybe you want to make another set of controls further back of your ship in case your main cockpit gets destroyed or something like that, right? Like kind of a backup kind of idea. Uh, here is your fuel system. I think this is a big contraption here, but uh, this one says star, uh, stored raw fuel, max raw fuel, and it shows coolant, coolant, store coolant, max coolant. So that's really cool. It's just you can get a lot of really cool data out of here and basically have a lot of fun out of here. Cargo door. So they use the word cargo door. So I'm assuming here this is like a, a good point where they wrote cargo door here. And this is them modifying the, the name of the door where these ones are the default. So you're, you're not controlling these states probably in any way with your programming at this point. So they, they only change the, the, the one that was useful for them at the time for the programming itself. But uh, yeah, really cool. 
uh, you know, them playing with the buttons. But uh, yeah, so this is the uh, the YOLO video that was released today. I'll put it in the description so you guys are in. The, yeah, description. I'll put it at the very top there so you can check out the video. But uh, I'm definitely excited. Oh, yeah, here's the uh, the multi-chip colors here I was telling you about. So you can say Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. They probably have advanced names. Uh, they actually have like a server array kind of idea. Uh, I'm calling them server array because it's just f kind of fun. But basically... These can hold uh, three units, I guess four technically if you put them there and more if you put them on the sides and stuff. But um, And they also do the, uh, the memory uh, movement on them. Now, they talked about the memory on this, but I wasn't sure if they were talking about these little guys on the bottom or if it was something else. But uh, apparently these can store memory. So the idea is that uh, these chips will communicate and maybe store uh, a value onto a piece of memory. And then that memory can be accessed for whatever reason. So if you have multiple programs that need to share that value, basically that's how it works. And that's important to have, of course, you know. So that's really cool. So it shows you here the server array sort of set up here which is kind of cool, and it has, uh, it looks like it's three slots in each one, which is pretty cool. And uh, there is a smaller version, though, as well, that has two slots, but it has, it looks like it has its input there. So it looks like you, your first one starts with your input, your power and data cable, and then y if you build another one, you get three slots on there. Um, I'm not sure if these ones are actually any different or if it's placed right on top. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell with the, the picture there because it doesn't show you what's behind them, but uh, pretty damn cool anyways. And then uh, they give you examples of programming. You can see how complex it gets. Uh, I'm assuming some of this is terminology. I don't know. I'm not really good my, with my math. So, uh, yeah, I saw some roll or something in there. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, there's sin and cos. cos oh, God, yeah. This is all beyond my knowledge, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to find somebody uh, to do that for me or uh, join a, a group that's good at programming. But, uh, okay, you can see the line read speed over here. So that's interesting. I didn't notice that till now. There's also a battery here. So I assume it has a basic battery life. If the power shuts down, it still lasts for a bit. It says 314. I'm not quite sure exactly what that means it doesn't mean it's been there for a while so we've seen it in other videos um not sure if it's not quite functioning or if it basically has an internal battery and it lasts three minutes and 14 seconds maybe it lasts three hours and 14 minutes i really don't know the ins and outs on how this battery life works but uh, i don't believe any of the devs have spoken about it so i should ask them about it but uh yeah so really cool um you know this is a really good example of them really using it in a large scale uh, basically, this is a public transportation which moves around from station to station. And you can see it even says, you know, your travel, your next stop, uh, stop counter, you know, things like this. And you can see the, the 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 cabling here. Looks a little funny when it's all over the place like this. I don't know if there's some kind of LOD involved there or if it just needs to be kind of cleaned up a bit. It looks like you, the, the corners kind of open up, so it, they're not quite clean. I just noticed that for the first time here, so I'm not sure if that's an LOD thing. Here they're showing you can actually make a game out of it, so that's really cool. I like how it lit up when it hits the thing, and here you can make a, a system where I guess you hit the button here, and it'll go towards the laser, and so this is good uh, for riveting, basically, or bolting, so they go around and bolt different parts of your ship, and you can automate the bolting as well. And so there's a lot of really cool stuff because you can kind of make like big parts of your ship. I assume pick up parts of the ship with like uh, the Canadian arm, sort of what you saw. And then they were showing this before in another video. Um, just a ba basic demo of it, you know, moving something. And <laughs> But anyways, yeah, so that's the YOLO uh, programming for Starbase. And I think that's really exciting. I think what's really exciting about that was... It wasn't so confusing. Um, there was things that anyone could do, like they can pick up and start doing basic programming for it, uh, where sometimes it's just like 100%, you know, Lua, where you have to do, you know, like it's just complex, right? You have to write like 30 lines to open a door or, you know, maybe even if it's less, it's like maybe 15 lines, but, you know, still it's something complex usually in a lot of games uh, where here it's, it's very, very simple, but it can also be very complex, uh, but it, it does give you 
uh, that ability to learn the basics so you can easily open and close a door. You can easily, you know, co connect your controls. You know, you can do some other things like, uh, you know, fully keep your uh, throttle max, even though I think you can do that anyways because the throttles are an up and down kind of control system in the game. But you, you get my point. The idea is, you know, you can click a button and, you know, somewhere in the ship and it'll all of a sudden full power your, your ship. It could be like an emergency. Oh, crap. You know, you're under attack. Your cockpit so far away. You can have like an emergency you know as long as you position your ship in an okay spot you're gonna have an emergency like full thrusters forward kind of button placed in your ship and smack that then run back to the front of your ship and get control of your ship you know you can do so much you know really fun and cool stuff with it anyway so i'm looking forward to what uh seeing what people can produce and show and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get into the beta very soon so uh, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy this. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and we'll see wonderful people next time. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.